Hi everyone. Hi, I'm Andrea. And I'm Jasmine. And we're Natural You Yarns. And this is the first episode of our Fall Floral Knit Along. Yes. Why fall florals? Why not? Well, that's just it. Late bloomers. Everything late. It was mm -hmm. a late bloomer this year, I think, in everybody's garden. But especially ours. <laughs> the sunflowers didn't take off until almost September. The cosmos are starting to blossom today. The cosmos? Very Those are the ones that didn't blossom at all, right? right? Wow. So it's really fitting then that <laughs> one of our patterns is actually called the late bloomer mittens. Yeah. And I've <laughs> just cast those on today. I hope nobody got ahead of themselves yeah. and knit the whole thing like Andrea. Um, and, and it's that, a sample. <laughs> and that you're knitting along with us today. Besides the late bloomer mittens, we're also going to be knitting the floral headband. Can you put that a little closer to the camera? Yes, I will link all the patterns in the show notes so that it will take you directly there. The late bloomer mittens are on Ravelry twice. I'm just going to show them off one more time. They're on Ravelry, Ravelry twice. Once is when they were published in a magazine and you can no longer buy them from that one. And the other is now a paid pattern on Ravelry. But if you want to look at some really cool projects, look at the first version that was available through the magazine because people have used not just the main color for their flowers, they've gotten quite creative with the color choices. And yeah. some of the mittens are just gorgeous. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. And one of the ones that I really, really loved was on um, on the, the pattern with the more projects, the second page, the username is Allie, and one of the L's is spelled with a, a number one instead oh. of an L. And they are these blue mittens, and all the flowers are multicolors. Even that within nice. the uh, flower itself, they're gorgeous, and I think that's my inspiration. Inspiration. So before I get into what I'm knitting and what I'm going to use, there was also one more pattern we should probably talk about. Yeah, we're it's sneaking a... in an extra one on you. <laughs> For those of you that are quick or have started early, it is called the Fall Flower Knit Along, and mm -hmm. we're also trying to pay homage to... A October. <laughs> right. It's we still That's in an October. Excuse. I just wanted to make these soft. <laughs> um, it is the pressed flower sock pattern. They're so cute. I'm sure that some of you have knit the other pressed flower um, versions. There's a. Is there a cowl? Did I see that? I don't know, but there could very well be. You can just there is a floral cast cowl. On. I'll add it. I'll find it and I'll add it. There's, I don't know if it's from the same designer. There's a hat, a cardigan. Mm -hmm. I believe a sweater, a shawl, and now socks. So you're starting on these? Yes, I've started this morning. Okay, before we talk about that, should we go back to the original patterns? Oh yes. Okay. Definitely, um, this is just an afterthought. The original patterns, what I wanted to say is that um, because they both call for um, a fingering weight held with a mohair, um, does this one call for that? It does, right? The ball floral? Yes. Yeah. Um, and this one calls for a sport weight, but our gots and our um, echo are very similar, and they would um, get you gauge. Yes. But basically, the um, the yardage that it calls for and the weight would be that you can make a set. Both of them. Yeah. Yeah, both of them make a, a set, a matching set, from just one skein of each, whether it be, um, you know, whatever color you like, but from the, the guts to have it. Shall we look at the colors? And the halo. Yeah, I think before we get into what we're doing, let's just look at all the color options for those of you who want to join us a little yes. later. Yes, because I know that there's people that have gotten their yarn, but maybe with it being a four-week knit-along, some of you might want to join in Afterthought. So that's a really nice combination Jasmine yeah. has in her hands. Yeah, this is Red Fox and Caramel. And sometimes you don't expect to like certain colors together, but then they just wow you. And I, I think, think that that would that's the soften the red fox. Yes, I agree. Yes. And show them what you're using. Um, I'm using the Tamarack Trail and Honey. So this is Honey and this is Tamarack Trail and I got to have it. And one is a little bit deeper than the other, and that just has to do with the way that the mohair and silk takes the dye differently. Um, but when It'll the, even out because yeah, they're the same tone. even the tone. So I've only just begun. There's not much to show you here. I just cast on. But I'm expecting that over time it's going to be a really warm color. And um, 
other, I'm going to do multiple colored flowers and everything I have chosen is going to really pop against it, even the pale pink. Mm -hmm. uh, These are from the advent calendar? Yeah. So, so all of you people in the group of Adventurous Knitting who have advent calendars, this is um, actually the original thought was to use all different colors for the flowers and make it an adventurous year pattern. So I haven't chosen all of mine yet, but um, some mm -hmm. of them I've already wound because I like them. Uh, deep purple and that pink, and I'm thinking of using cranberry capers as we called it, Atlantic aster, and possibly throwing in a blue, crashing waves. This is blue and white, which would add extra interest, I think, mm -hmm. with the variations. But again, you can, um, you can play it safe, and knit the flowers or embroider the flowers on with the yarn that you chose to do the whole mitten. I think there'd be a variation in the look of the flowers if you do some of them in just the mohair and others in just the fingering and mm -hmm. then a combination. So you've got three different slightly variables on the color right there. Yeah, there's lots of options. Okay, so the other colors that were available for the monochromatic look are the blues. We've got Wabakimi and Halo in Damsum, which will um, make a beautiful blue background for your colors. Yeah. But you can swap out the Wabakimi and put oh, I in. I love this one. Aurora Borealis. Who said you so can't have a got, variegated yarn? Right. So then you would have some pops of color shining through your mohair, and it gives you some color choices already for your. Flowers. Especially if you're not going to use your minis to do the flowers. Right. Yeah. And so this will already give you some variation in flowers. But if you prefer purples, the purple also goes because there's purple in this. And that way you can change how it's going to look. Somebody who chose the blue, the damson um, mohair, versus somebody who chooses the um, elderberry is going to have a completely different looking headband right. and mittens. So if you're just making mittens or you just want to make headbands, the same color mohair may very well go with various different shades of um, fingering. So you've got gifts that you can make that won't look like they're all the same color. They'll all be different. That's so true. Yeah. And if you are thinking that you want to stick with just one main skein to do all the flowers and embroidery, and this one, why not choose again, one like Everything is Love, where you have a rainbow of natural color so that each of your flowers will have so much variation. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, it goes with the purple, just like these other ones did. But you can swing over and use the pink. To soften it. Look right. How gorgeous that is. So maybe you have this and you've got two different shades of mohair. And again, you've got two different looks. We were talking on Instagram the other day with a couple photos of how different mohair changes the main skein when knit up. Yeah. Right? Like this is um, a red, very similar to uh, this one here, a strawberry daiquiri. Um, with a purple with mohair. With a purple mohair. And that just really changed how... And knit up and you can see the sort of it almost looks like speckling throughout because of the way the colors interacted with each other mm -hmm. yeah sorry and to or you can get like we have everything is love which has a lot of different colors but this mm -hmm. one here which is different because it doesn't have any blue or green this one's fun and i think it's really appropriate because we called it late bloomer before right. we knew we were doing this knit along yeah <laughs> <laughs> and again this one would go with the purple, mm -hmm. with the pink, with the, um, what's this one called? That's Bordeaux. Bordeaux. And you know what? You could be really, really crazy and make it warm yeah. and golden with and, that. Or you can make it um Can you tell raspberry. me I like to play with yarn? So <laughs> the, the possibilities are just endless for the okay. beautiful combinations you can end Let's up with. Try and put them Jasmine back the likes same, order. <laughs> the same way so people can see what their options are. Right. Okay. All right. And there was one more. You pulled it out already. The Bordeaux. Bordeaux. So Bordeaux, we had a tonal. This is a 50 gram skein, but we do have it in 100 gram skeins. Mm -hmm. And this one is called Wild Sumac, which is um, got lighter tones in it than this. It's much more of a 
Yeah. Variegated. If you're thinking of doing a fade, it's perfect. Yes. <laughs> and the Bordeaux um, goes perfectly with both of them, of course. This one here would give you that tone on tone, and this one here would lighten it up. Yes. Yeah. So, um, if you have any questions about which colors to choose, come on into the shop and we will or, help you. Or send us a message. We'd be more than happy to send you a picture mm -hmm. sample. On our website, there's a contact us submission form, but there's also a messenger icon on the bottom right hand of the screen, which directly links to our messenger through mm -hmm. Facebook Meta. And um, we'll get back to you usually within a few few hours if we're not super busy. <laughs> For those of you that are casting on, we're sorry that we're holding you up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the late bloomer mix, it starts, um, you cast on and join in the round and you knit just two inches of stocking net. And this is going to be your inner cup. <coughs> so it's not going to be visible. It just adds an extra bit of warmth. Or if you have your hands tucked in and you want that inner cup to fit up your sleeve and your jacket, I suppose that could work too. Um, I've started... But I chose to do the German Twisted Cast On. And you told me it has all kinds of different names. The Old Norwegian Cast On, the, the English Cast On. The Long Tail Twisted Cast On, all kinds of things. Right. So I'm going to link um, to the best video we found of how you to do like it. that video? I love that video. It was so easy to follow. And yeah. she repeated it and she moved slowly. And, she and then at the very end there was like angles. a slightly different... Well, she Spot. she showed you different angles. Yeah. So you saw it from like head on, and then she kind of rotated her wrist, so you saw what was happening from a different angle, and you could see it then in your own hands. Yeah. I thought it was really great that way. Yeah, because you don't always see it the way that they show it, but. And not only does it have a nicer edge, I know I haven't really started too much. Um, it has this lovely edge, but also, um, as part of the tutorial video. She teaches you, you cast on one extra. So, for example, I'm doing the medium. I needed to cast on 41. I cast on 42. And it's about how you knit the last two stitches together. The first one and the last one. Right. Um, but you don't slip it from the, the first needle back, the left-hand needle back onto the right-hand needle like we normally do, or knit them two together like you would normally do. It has to do with how you pass that stitch over. Um, so that and it's leaning wearing, at the right and, angle. And putting the tail yarn to the front and then to the back and then moving it here and then moving it to the other. It's a little bit it, tricky, but it's not. It's just something that you might not be able to remember all the time. So you'd have to watch the video. It creates a seamless bond. So you know how the, normally there's a little bit of a lip or a bump and you can tell what, how one jogs. Yeah. Not with this. And it's wonderful for mittens. Or, or other things that you're making. Uh -huh, anything. Yeah. But, you know, if you don't like it, don't do it. It doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, it's just, I recommend trying it. So we'll yeah, link that in the all. show notes. That's what um, Nidlongs are all about, learning new things and trying something different. Right? Yeah. So um, I'm going to continue to knit a little while you talk. Yes. So the second item on the, in the knit along and what was intended for the leftovers from your mittens are the floral headband um, and I just was looking for things that were embroidered and that, mm -hmm. that used mohair and fingering and what I liked about this is it was um, a relatively fast knit it's actually knit flat on large needles right so on a size 5 needle so it won't take you long to whip this up and then um, you do the embroidery. I made the mistake. If you look, I can't reach it. Can you reach that? I'll reach it. If you notice. I'm trying. Okay. If you notice, the center is right here, and that's where it's sewn together at the end. And in the diagram, it showed you to do these flowers much closer to the center. And I thought, well, that's not going to work. That's going to be too close. But now that it's done, I wish I'd done it closer to the center. So... For those of you, when you go to do this... Um, listen to the pattern. <laughs> listen to the pattern, not to your head that says, oh no, that won't work. And um, there's a die... It's, you do the embroidery and then you fold it in and sew a seam on the inside, down the center. So it's actually doubled. It's quite warm. 
You cannot see the seam, but you can't see any of the ends from your embroidery either. It's all safely tucked away and won't get pulled and damaged from the inside. That's and fantastic. Yeah, that's really good. And then the way it's sewn together in the middle, the free pattern, right? Yes, this yeah. one was a free the pattern. The free pattern has extensive diagrams on how to fold the two pieces together so that they're twisted and end up looking like um, a beautiful term turban twist in the front. I love it. Yeah, it took me a couple of tries. It reminds yeah. me of infinity scarves where you can't tell where they begin. Right. It has that, it's wonderful that it's seamless like that. And it's so nice and warm because it's a, a looser knit doubled and the mohair always, always gives it um, extra warmth anyway. Yeah, I know a lot of people, well, some people are iffy about mohair, but I think now that we are using Super Kid Mohair, that's now the standard, it's soft, it's not moved, scratchy. Yeah, and it's spun with silk, so that's an additional um, softener. It also gives it a little bit extra shine, but it's not like the old mohair. It's not scratchy at all. It's next to skin softness for sure. Mm -hmm. So... Um, in the spirit of wanting to knit with as many of you and have you happy with what your project is as possible, and if you want to not necessarily do both pieces but end up finding that you have extra yarn left, can you put that back over there, please? I can. Can I talk a moment about it? Sure. Or I'll come back to it. You, you were on a roll. Yeah, I was on a roll. What else is new? I get there and... <laughs> <laughs> keep going, keep going. So if you wanted to do the mittens, but you didn't want to do the headband because nobody would ever wear a headband that you know on this planet, perhaps you it's would so like gorgeous. to do... gorgeous. You know what? I'm going to make you change your mind. But keep going. <laughs> You'd wear a headband once you see how gorgeous it is. Ooh. It, yeah, Jasmine, Ooh. that suits you so nicely. Anyway, if you don't want a headband, you want a hat. if you have short hair, that's not going to give you a hat head either. But um, as you may or may not know, this is our Call Me Cozy hat. It's a pattern that um, I wrote, and it also holds fingering and mohair together. The um, ribbing on the edge is a mock cable stitch, and um, there's enough yarn in one skein of mohair and one skein of fingering to do both this hat and a pair of mittens. So it stands to reason that if you do these other mittens, these gorgeous mittens, then you would have enough yarn left over to do that hat if you didn't want to do the headband. Yes. Or, and this is crazy, you buy two skeins of fingering and two skeins of merino and do both the headband and both sets of mitts and the hat. And you've got all kinds of <laughs> Christmas knitting. <laughs> Your Christmas knitting is almost complete. And you can just swap them out. And right? you can use your minis to embroider on that hat, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, so the great thing about these mittens that I am knitting is that it has a chart form as you work on the body of the mitten, you know, the, the palm and back. Um, it tells you um, there's two different charts, one for the back and one for the, the palm, the front of the cuff. And it tells you where to create bobbles. So On the top, right? On the top and on the palm. Oh. They're marked. There's very few on this one. They're more towards the bottom. Oh, like, like towards the wrist. Yeah, towards the wrist. Okay. And then the other ones sort of disperse all the way up the top of the mitt. Well, you can see. And those bobbles are going to be the center of your um, flowers. So and it's just, it's a, matter just of, a matter of I've, I've stitches read it. all the way around each I've bobble. Read. Right? Can I tell them? Sure. <laughs> I'm excited. So it's a knit front and back. Of the same stitch twice so you're that would create four um, new stitches out of one and then knit into the front again so now you have five stitches and then you're going to lift the second third fourth and fifth on the right hand needle over um, the last stitch to bind off so that's how you're creating that bobble that extra bit and it has it in the chart when you do it then going back after you've done your mittens you got to you're going to embroider on them and it says on, let me see, page, oh, they're not numbered, but towards the very end, page eight, I believe, it shows you how you then embroider. Oh, it's got it actually. Yeah. Okay. 
and how you would work around the center. And they're going to, um, basically you go from the center, oh, the knot out and back, but they're going to overlap a little bit and, and sort of, it feels like they're, um, popping up from between one another, which is really pretty. It's like an overgrown meadow. Yeah. I, I printed the pattern because there's a lot of flipping between the instructions and the charts and the two charts are on two different pages. Are there written instructions? Or no, that? it says to, to follow the chart. Okay. Work 19 stitches from left mitten front cuff chart, then, uh, 18 stitches from left mitten back chart. Work in pattern as established. I'm lost. I'm... Yes, you need the charts. Okay. <laughs> you do. You need them. All so, right. um, if you're using a tablet or something, you're just gonna have to flip flop between them, or um, if you have like we do, two stands so that you can look at them at the same time. Maybe that's helpful. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's my tip. And with this one, with the floral flowers, you didn't do any of the. Leaf, There's no bobbles. The leaf embroidery on it. No, I didn't want to. But we have different shades of green in our in the minis from the advent calendar, so people right. could if they yeah. wanted to. Or even the center of your flowers, right, can be green. Right. So. Yeah. Of, there are a couple on here that are green. Yeah. And um. This is very warm, by the way. I like, you can take it off. If you yeah, want. I think I might have to. I feel myself sweating a bit. So <laughs> I am, of course, deviating from the norm, and I am going to be doing these socks because, yes, we want to do the mohair and fingering knit along, and for the fall, incorporating the um, minis in a minor way. But people that still have minis from the advent calendar probably really do need a couple more projects under their belt. And I know that um, we all have a lot of fun making socks for some people for Christmas. So this is an easy pattern. Um, it I use the same um, cast on as Jasmine just to have a nice even edge. And um, the cuff on this one is actually Knit 3 Pearl 1. It starts out with a knit two purl one, knit three purl one, and then it ends with a purl one, knit one, but that lines up with the chart. And the nice thing for you that don't like a chart, there were also written instructions for the pattern. But mm. these are the charts for, um, for the legs and the feet. And because it's mosaic knitting, you're not actually carrying any of the oh, yarn. I was just going to ask that. Yeah, so you're just knitting um, two rows per color and doing a slip stitch from the yarn from the row below. So if you're, let's say you're doing black and white and you've done two rows of black and you're going to the white, if you slip a black stitch that makes it look like there's a black stitch in the white row and that's how your pattern develops. You don't actually have to have two yarns going at the same time at all. That's good. Even mm -hmm. though, can you show the picture again to the, the people? Because when I looked at it, I thought maybe those flowers were embroidered on. I could no. not envision that being mosaic. Oh, and so yeah. that's, no, you have to hold it up. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. I'm very happy to know that because yeah. and, I could tackle that now. And again, the other thing was that it, it's a daisy pattern, which goes with the mittens and the headband. And so you can make any combination of gifts for people as well, right? Mm -hmm. And um, because I wanted to use minis, I've wound three different mini colors. These happen to fade quite nicely. I forget the exact names. I think this one was... Um, uh, the flower from around no, here. No, it was um, the funny candy that Oma likes. Oh, chicken bones. Chicken bones is a um, maritime Christmas candy. This one was Nova Red Raspberry, and uh -huh. this one, I'm not sure. It's not oh, Peggy's Coast it's, Sunset? Yeah, it is. Peggy's, Peggy's Coast, Coast Sunset. Sunset. So it has a little grain there for the, from the rocks at Peggy's Cove. So I'm going to alternate the flowers to the various different colors so that it looks like it's faded um, 
I'll start, I've started with this pink. I'm going to do a flower row in these, a flower row in this, then this. And I'll go back um, and do the medium and then the light one again. I don't know how many repeats I'll get in the, in the entire pair of socks. But I thought that that might be kind of pretty. So I do have um, a main skein that I'm using. Rather than one of ours, I decided to grab this one. Um, and make people aware of the fact that we have a yarn called Refine. It's a good yarn. Yeah, Refine is a recycled superwash yarn with nylon. So it's totally environmentally friendly because you're keeping things from going to the website. I mean, to the... <laughs> to the... Dump. <laughs> Landfill. It is on the website. <laughs> And it has 5% viscose. So what they've done is they've actually ground up clothing that's got um, nylon and mohair. So, no. And merino. The, merino. You keep misspeaking mohair. I'm not speaking. <laughs> Even you saying that, I'm not speaking. What's going on? I don't so know. <laughs> this, this yarn, yeah, I'll just... Yeah, you Show do. them. It's called Refine. It's mis uh, recycled superwash merino, viscose and nylon. Um, it's a great addition to our brand, especially if people are thinking of knitting for someone else and you don't know how they will do with hand washed yarns. Um, this way you can do the yoke or the, the cuffs or any kind of color work with natural dyed um, accents, maybe even our minis or our 50 gram skeins, but for the most part, um, sort of saving on cost there and also saving the environment so it's great yeah and you're Thank using you. it for your socks and i'm using it for the main color in the socks so i think that these three colors will actually look quite nice with it it's stunning i like all of those together all right and that's about it yeah um we've talked about just about everything we Colors would you love use. progress picture right okay People's so pictures and yes as you join the knit along and as you um, post to social media, please um, comment in the Year of Adventurous Knitting. It's a Facebook group, Yak for short. That's where we hope everyone starts a conversation. But also post on your own social media, whether mm -hmm. you have Instagram or Facebook or, you know, whatever. And if you, you like, tag us, those tag that us. follow will see it. Mm -hmm. And use the hashtag Fall Floral Cow. K-A-L. Right. And now we need to talk about the subscriptions to the YouTube. Okay. Let's mention that. that well, that was an awkward way to do it. I know. I know. <laughs> Andrea well, the whole like, thing for us is no, awkward. No, Andrea would like us to mention <laughs> that we would also appreciate that since you are watching this on YouTube, please like, comment below, tell me what you're working on or what colors you're using, and don't forget to subscribe. Right. Because if you hit the bell, then you'll get notification every time we have a new video. Mm. And that, mm -hmm. that could be handy. <laughs> <laughs> we will be going um, and doing our videos every Wednesday. Little tips and tricks, updates, showing our own progress, and hopefully um, connecting with you and, and seeing how you're doing. So you can post questions here or in the Facebook group. And um, yeah, it's free for you to subscribe, and it means so much to us. So please do that. Yes. Okay. And once a month, we do a sip and stitch on there as well, a longer podcast. That's true. It's a different podcast. This is in the year of Adventurous Knitting. So you should really just subscribe to our whole channel so you get updates on both. And you won't miss a thing. No. <laughs> um, tomorrow night is the uh, Maker Circle, which is an online social we host over Zoom. You can find more details on our Facebook page or on our website under events. And we are encouraging everyone to come out if you're doing the knit along with us, even if you're not, but especially those doing the knit along, come on out and introduce yourself and say hi, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully get a little bit of encouragement and um, maybe some praise for your progress. Well, and it's always great to meet new people. Yes. So I think that encompasses us for today. It does. All right. Until next time. Be natural. See you. Bye. Bye.